أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله وعلى الأئمة الميامين من آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن أعداءه Continue on with our previous discussion and that is in the مفطرات and that which deems the fast invalid we've reached the point inshallah we were going to discuss the topic of sexual intercourse. Now often when discussing sexual intercourse in terms of psalm fasting, it's a topic where many misconceptions arise. Why? Because it's a taboo topic. It's not often mentioned on the pulpit, on the member or on camera, because for the reason that many of my Shia brothers and sisters f become shy once mentioning the topic of, of for example, sexual intercourse and masturbation, but it must be tackled under the basis of la haya fi din Inshallah, I'm going to try and take on this topic from its several corners. Sexual intercourse invalidates one's fast if either there is penetration past the point of the top of the male organ or if there is ejaculation from either side, which means if the male penetrates the female to further than the point of the top of the male organ, both become, they invalidate the fast of both of them, the man and the woman. But if, for example, there is no penetration and one of either the, the man or the female ejaculates, he who ejaculates, his fast is deemed invalid or void. He who does not, his fast is still considered valid. If the penetration is less than the top of the male organ, the fast is still considered valid for the, for the both of them, unless there is ejaculation. Sometimes, for example, we are asked that is foreplay permissible whilst fasting? If one is to engage in foreplay and knows for a fact that he will ejaculate throughout this foreplay, this foreplay becomes haram. But if one knows for a fact that he will not ejaculate through this foreplay, his, the foreplay is, is, there is no issue with, his, with the foreplay. But if there does happen, if there, there is, if, if there is ejaculation throughout this foreplay, and one knows that he is about to ejaculate through, if, if he does uh, undertake this foreplay, then his fast is deemed invalid and he must perform the, the qada and must pay the the kafara. When mentioning the top of the male organ, scholars mean the point of circumcision. So when we say there is penetration to pass the top of the male organ, the top is the point of circumcision. If some sort of sexual activity takes place and one doubts whether there is penetration or not, so whether it was penetration past the point of circumcision or not, as an obligatory precaution, his fast is given the void ruling. It is considered void. And it is necessary for him to observe the qada, the makeup fast. However, it is not obligatory on him to pay the kafara. Why? Because he did not purposely try to penetrate. He, was, he doubted whether it penetrated or not. But if he does purposely try to penetrate, even if it does not mean there was penetration, so long as there was, as we, we mentioned a few episodes ago, ihtizaz bin niya, there was a shakiness in the intention of the one fasting. If one forgets that he or she is observing a fast and engages in any sort of sexual intercourse, he or she is not, he or she, her, his or her fast is not considered void. However, if they remember during the sexual intercourse, they must abstain, they must stop automatically, straight away, and withdraw. If they do not, for even a few seconds afterwards, their fast is considered invalid. Okay, so how about if someone is forced into sexual intercourse? When I mean forced into sexual intercourse, I mean literally forced. Not that someone is putting pressure on you to have sexual intercourse. I mean someone that is forced, that is left helpless. And they cannot resist. For example, they are threatened, there is some sort of risk if they resist. But, but for your partner, for example, being upset is not saying your partner is forcing you. If your partner says, if you do not engage in sexual intercourse, I will become upset with you. That's not being forced. Forced, I mean, you are left literally helpless. If someone's forced into sexual intercourse, scholars say that, that 
The one physically forced is not to be blamed, and their fast is considered correct. But the one that is compelled, the one that is compelling the 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 one that is compelling the second party into the sexual intercourse, their fast is considered void, and they must pay two kafarat, not one. If the male forces the female into sexual intercourse, he must his fast is void, must repeat the fast, and he must pay two kafarat instead of one. One for him and one for the, the female. If it's the other way around, for example, if a female literally forces a man, forces by force, forces a man into sexual intercourse, his, sorry, her uh, fast is considered invalid and she must pay only one kafar. Now, which leads us on to the second topic, which is masturbation or istimna. Istimna is the Arabic terminology for masturbation. If a person is observing a fast and during this fast he or she masturbates, their fast is considered void and invalid. If semen is discharged from a person's body involuntarily whilst fasting, that fast does not become void. Involuntarily for any reason it could be. For example, whilst one is asleep. For example, being forced involuntarily. Some scholars deem the fast to be correct. Others say no, one must make up the qada and not pay kafara. There is a bit of a ikhtilaf, uh, there is a bit of a difference here. If someone who is observing a fast knows that if he falls asleep during the day, he will become muhtalim or mujtanib. He will ejaculate throughout his sleep involuntarily. If he sleeps, he will see uh, what we call uh, hulum, and he will involuntarily ejaculate throughout his sleep. He is allowed to sleep whilst fasting. There is no issue with his sleep whilst fasting, even though he does wake up later on and find that he did ejaculate for any reason. And if he becomes muhtalim, his fast is not considered void. So if he does ejaculate throughout his sleep, his fast is not considered void. His fast is still considered um, valid, insha'Allah ta'ala. A fasting person who has become muhtalim can urinate while after waking up. So someone who is asleep and ejaculates throughout his sleep, once waking up, can urinate, even if he knows this urine will push out and flash out more particles of semen. Why? Because the istimna or the, uh, the sorry, the ihtilam, the ejaculation has already happened. It's already taken place. And the only way to do the tathir, to do the cleansing or the purification of, from one's janaba, from one's semen, is through, uh, is through urine. That is all, inshallah, we have time for today. Insha'Allah Ta'ala will continue on with our topic and our discussion in the next episode. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.